Last week we created our base map and this week we're going to take it one step further and go over zone and sector analysis. Aloha everybody, Sean again with Homestead in Hawaii and today we are going to go further into our site design of my mother's food forest next door. We are going to go into zone and sector analysis. Well zones are pretty much just the flow of the resources on site. It's just a way for us to kind of organize our our flow patterns through the landscape so that we could design based according to how often areas are being accessed and then the sectors are the energies that are coming into the site from off-site uh, that could be the sun the wind the rain and that's where we're going to obtain a yield remember those permaculture principles we talked about in another video if you haven't checked it out it's um should be linked to right up there but Obtaining a yield is like catching the sun for solar energy or harvesting the rain for water catchment, whatever it may be. We're going to obtain that yield. We're going to use the sector analysis to give us input into how obtaining that yield will be possible for our site. So get your papers and pencils out. We're going to go back into the design studio and put zones and sectors down onto our site plan. Now for this stage, we are going to use a different paper, tracing paper. We want to be able to trace over our existing base map. Now another alternative is just to make copies of your base map and draw right onto that. But if you don't have copies or have tracing paper at your disposal, this is a great way to do our next layers of our design. So I'm going to overlay my tracing paper onto my previous base map design that we made. And so in order to get zones, there has to be a bit of observation that takes place. You need to observe how your site is used. This is going to be a little bit easier if you're already living in the space. You'll have an idea of where your energies go. How often are you visiting certain parts of your property? Now before we begin, zones tend to be categorized into, into five different parts. Sometimes there's a zone zero, which may mean the home or the self. Typically zone one means closest to home. The areas that are right along the access points, perhaps from your car to the front door. Areas that you use constantly. Then zone two gets a little bit less attention. Perhaps it's an area where you have some small fruit trees or small animals that get a regular visit from you. And then zone three will be more of a food forest that's located a little further away. Zone four would be perhaps a managed woodland. We're getting a little more wild and a woodland area that gets managed by you. Um, some properties, especially if you're a small one like this one, won't really have a zone 4 and maybe not even a zone 3. But we do have a zone 5, which is our native forest area here. This is our zone 5 is already highlighted out. So we're going to get into identifying the other zones on the property. And so what that takes is just a simple pencil. And you can begin to just highlight where your zones are. So for this property, the front access is here, leading over to the carport, and then back around over to here, where there's a, a, actually a gate in the fence where my mom can come to my property next door. So this is, tends to be her main area of activity. This would be a great spot for more intensive growing to take place. I'm gonna call this zone one. Okay, back here we have a zone three. It's not accessed very often, it's behind the house there. And then as well, we have a, a zone three over here. And so this will be a zone five. And what we're going to do as well is we're going to 
mark down our perimeters. Okay, this way we know where we can overlay this piece of paper again so we're on target. And so I'm going to outline my my zone fives here. And then I'm going to put this area in this fenced in yard as a zone two, mostly visited by the dog, but you got to clean up that dog poop every now and then. So that's a regular visit. And then what we have is a little bit more of a, a zone three out here in this corner going along the fence here and you can see zones are not exactly concentric circles but they could be any shape really and then this is another zone too it gets a regular visit because there's a nice little space right in here where my mom likes to hang out so I'm gonna just draw the outline of the house here just so these zones are fully delineated and so what we have now is an idea of where certain plantings are gonna go like I'm gonna put an extensive food forest along here this area will be more grass and some smaller plantings this area will be mainly for the dog run this area will be an area where we create some low maintenance hedge plants that can be a barrier between the house and the next door property. This area will be a more intensively managed area where we can actually grow maybe some vegetables and raised beds or, or whatnot down in here in this area. The zone five, we're gonna leave completely alone. And this zone three also includes a driveway and this area here is a big turnaround as well. So I'm gonna delineate a little area along the fence where some plantings can go. And so a good step from here is to color off your zones in different colors so that they're easy to identify. And here you have our zone map, which we can overlay at any time when we go further on with our design. Okay, so that was mapping zones and getting that down onto a tracing paper. Next, we're gonna map out our sectors, the incoming energies onto our site. And both the zones and sectors that we do now will come into play in the future when we further develop our food forest design. But for now, we're going to just focus on zones and sectors. So let's dive into sectors right now. And so I have another overlay here and I've already drawn the perimeter here. And I just like to do that with each overlay so I know exactly where to place it back down on the paper. And so what we want to do is identify what's coming into the site and from where. So what one thing we're going to have is we have the sun and this is just a chart and you can draw anywhere on your piece of paper, but the sun comes up and sets in an angle like this seasonally. It's moving throughout the sky. All right. So since we're in Hawaii, the sun does not move too much throughout the seasons. We're pretty close to the equator, but we still are a few latitudes north of the equator. So it does have a little bit of variation throughout the summer and the winter seasons. So the sun for the most part, you can see, will shift a little bit based upon the seasons, but for the most part, it's coming up from this side of the property and going across to this side of the property. Now, the the rains the ocean is more here let's identify north again so we have north marked off over here and you can see it kind of matches with our sun here's the east here's the west there's the north there's the south 
you can see we uh, um, situated our solar panels on the southern facing side of the roof it's not exactly southern but it is as southern as we could get and they get a lot of sunshine there so another element that is coming into our site would have to be the wind and especially for us the rain so when the wind and the rain comes onto the site it moves in from this direction and these are the winds that we want we have to be careful of we want to identify that wind storm rain pattern so that we can design accordingly so what else is coming on the site we have our sun energy we have our wind and rain energy but then that rain not only brings the wind but occasionally brings the flooding and so off of this road comes water so we're gonna draw it like this so the water runs off the main road that leads past our site and it it goes slightly downhill our lot is mostly level but it does have a slight downhill to the point where water from the road runs off into this area here which is like a little bowl if you can call it a bowl we really do not have much difference in topography but even on a flat lot there is, there are some differences what else do we have if you have utilities if you're not totally off the grid like we are here you could identify where those are coming in perhaps you have power lines that are going underground um, phone lines water lines that may be underground and hidden this would be the time for you to include that into the zone and sector map another aspect that we have coming from off the site is the view so for us we have a beautiful view out in this direction and then another great view for the sunset time heading out in this direction and we can go ahead and identify it so in our view shed area this is important to note because is this where we would want to plant really tall trees would we want to keep the plantings lower in this area to increase our view shed or maybe part of the view would be a certain tree there's our view shed any other sectors that we might have we can include shadows that come from the sun off-site and we can mark down the shadows there could be frost if you live in a cold climate and you can mark down areas where frost pockets happen there could also be fire that comes in off-site where is the predominant direction that fire will take all of these things that can come off-site add them into your zone and sector map and if you wanted to figure out the angles of your sun there's a simple tool that you can get it's called the sun compass and and that could help figure out the angles that your sun has during certain parts of the seasons awesome our design is coming along not only do we now have a base map but we've also created a zone map and a sector analysis map so in our next video we're gonna dive a little deeper into design and start to plan out more of our food forest. Why don't you go ahead right now and hit the subscribe button to be sure that that video reaches you when it's released. I hope these videos are helping y'all. Make sure that you get the work done. Until next time, we'll see ya. Ahoy ho!